Every pond owner or future pond owner should have a basic understanding of the biological processes that are occurring inside a body of fresh water. It doesn't matter if it's a large pond or a small pond or if it has lots of fish or hardly any fish. If we understand the basics, we can achieve great water quality and clarity. We can also use our understanding to reduce maintenance. And then we can create our own filter systems that will be well suited to whatever type of pond we decide to create. Ultimately, that will save us both time and money. G'day, my name's Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. The process that I'm referring to is commonly known as the nitrogen cycle. And I'm gonna try and keep this as simple as I can, but still touch on everything that's going on. Basically anything that ends up in the pond that's alive or was once alive will produce ammonia, which is a type of nitrogen. Fish produce ammonia when they breathe and poo. Plants produce ammonia when they die off and decompose inside the pond. Ammonia, even in small doses, isn't great for aquatic animals like fish, and it needs to be processed. Now the good news is there's nitrogen processing bacteria all around us. It's in the air, the water, and the soil. The most common bacteria inside a pond is aerobic bacteria, there's two types, one that takes the ammonia and converts it into nitrite, and another that takes the nitrite and converts it into nitrate. The nitrate is still a form of nitrogen, but it's generally acceptable in low quantities. These two common types of bacteria like oxygen-rich environments, and that's why we call these bacteria aerobic. That just means rich in oxygen. Pretty much every type of filter that you can buy will aim to move highly oxygenated water through some type of medium that is growing these aerobic bacteria. These filters work pretty good. They're easy to establish the bacteria colony and the filters don't need to take up a lot of room. They can also process quite a lot of ammonia quickly. That's especially good news for ponds with lots of fish. So while they can process a lot of ammonia in a short amount of time, the nitrate will still remain. Certain plants will consume ammonia, nitrite and nitrate and give the bacteria a helping hand. Algae sort of has a foot in both camps and I struggle to explain exactly what it is, but for simplification purposes, let's think of it as a hybrid, part plant, part bacteria. It can help break down solid materials like sticks and leaves that make their way into the pond. It can also use the nitrogen to grow and it's a food source for aquatic life. So the fish and other aquatic animals will nibble on plants and algae along with the other microorganisms that are feeding on the organic materials breaking down inside the pond. If you get the right balance of fish, bacteria, algae and plants, this cycle can go round and round without issue. Keeping the balance can be tricky, therefore in a system that is utilising aerobic bacteria, it's generally recommended to do water changes. This will dilute the nitrate levels and keep them within an acceptable range. Others will advocate that heaps of plants will maintain a perfect balance. Plants do work, but you need to be active in removing the dead and decaying material so that it doesn't just re-release the nutrients back into the pond. Too much dying organic material in the pond is bad. This is called eutrophication. This means there's lots and lots of nutrient. In most backyard ponds, we want low levels of nutrient because that will keep algae and plants from taking over the pond. So there are two other types of bacteria that can process nitrogen and help complete the nitrogen cycle. There are bacteria that live in areas with very tiny amounts of oxygen. These are called anoxic areas. And there are bacteria that live in areas with no oxygen. These are called anaerobic areas. It all gets quite complex, but apparently the anaerobic bacterias can steal oxygen from the nitrate and convert it back into nitrite, 
which sounds bad, but the aerobic bacteria can convert it back into nitrate. Now as this tug of war is going on between the bacteria, the amount of nitrogen is being diminished and other nutrients are being produced which are more easily used by the plants and algae than the nitrate on its own. Then the bacteria that live in the low oxygen and oxic zones, well they can process ammonia directly and convert it into a gas that is re released into the atmosphere. They can also remove phosphate, which is a favoured food source for string algae. So I figure why not hedge your bets and accept all three zones inside your pond. Utilising all three types of bacteria along with the plants and the algae after all, this is exactly what is happening in natural bodies of water. This is why I'm so fond of bog filters. As the water comes into the filter, it's high in oxygen. Then as the aerobic bacteria consume the oxygen, as it converts the ammonia and nitrite, the oxygen level depletes, and we most likely end up with an anoxic zone. I wouldn't imagine that there's an anaerobic zone being created inside the bog, but it's possibly happening inside the pond itself in areas with very little water movement and large sediment buildups. As the water moves out of the rock and pebble, the oxygen is reintroduced and therefore the aerobic bacteria start doing their thing again. You couple it with plants and algae inside the filter and you've recreated on a miniature scale what nature has done for millennia. Now with all that said, there's lots of ways to filter water and not every pond needs a bog filter or a traditional aerobic style filter. And there's lots of other things going on inside the pond as the bacteria work their magic. I did make a video on things like pH, KH and GH for anyone who wants to geek out further. So I'll link that in the description if you want to learn more. Those aren't things I tend to worry about. I like the ecosystem approach. You can see lots of the different filters I've built for various ponds by scrolling back through the previous uploads. And if you are interested in building an ecosystem styled pond like this, you can download the formulas I use to create this style of pond. I'll link that in the description also. I hope this hasn't been too boring. If you enjoyed it, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.